שלום, שלום, שלום. שלום, שלום, למי? שלום, שלום, שלום. Greetings everyone, greetings everyone. Shalom, shalom, let me, shalom, shalom. Gotta make sure that uh, everything is working correctly. What's going on? Shalom to all the family, brothers and sisters uh, for tuning in. Blessings to you all. Don't forget to like and share. Don't forget to like and share. If you can hear me good, uh, put a one in the chat. If you can hear me good, put a one in the chat. Um, put ones in the chat. Uh, wrenches, make sure y'all on y'all game this morning because they no telling what kind of trolls we get coming up in here. What's going on? So the shout out to Pastor Victor Baxter, part of Boom. Uh, Boom, uh, the Boom family down in Eastman. Uh, down the open door, uh, shout out to Ace Ace in the building. Shalom to you. Uh, shout out uh, to uh, Brother Leon. Shalom, shalom to you down there with the Boone family as well in Eastman. Uh, shout out to Mr. Black Tastic, uh, ATL. Shout out to Arrow Spike out there in Illinois. Uh, Brother David Stewart, we coming your way in 2023 in Orlando, uh, Brother David. Uh, shout out to Lakeisha Lively. Uh, shout out to Danielle Curry. Uh, shalom to none other than my beautiful queen, who I'm excited to have on here uh, this morning. She's checking her, her husband out this morning. Uh, uh, shout out to Lady Emma Brown uh, in the building. Shout out to none other than DK. Uh, what's going on, family? Uh, let's see here. Russell up. The trolls, mods, a righteous rodeo. Hey, boy, I'm trying to tell you, Ace Ace. Y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all. All right, all right. Getting excited, getting excited, everyone. Shalom to Sister Pam. What's going on? Shalom to you as well. Uh, drop your cities in the build in, in here on this live. Listen, brothers and sisters, let me check this out. If you are, let me do some house chores. Don't forget to check out our website, boomchurchint.org. Uh, That's boomchurchint.org. Uh, boomchurchint.org. Don't forget to check out our website. Also, if you are in the Jacksonville, Florida area and you are looking for a a uh, assembly to be a part of that is messianic and that is Ruach Field. Uh, hit us up. Uh, shoot me an email at bishop brown at boomchurchint.org and uh, send me an email. And I will give you the location of the address uh, where the Shabbats are held. If you're in the Atlanta area, uh, hit me up at that same email. If you are in the Louisville, Kentucky area, hit me up at the same email. If you're in the Houston, Texas area, hit me up at that email. If you are in the Akron, Ohio area, hit me up with that email. Uh, we have congregations in those areas. If you are in, in near, uh, near middle Georgia, close to Macon, uh, down Tifton, Jessup, in that area, uh, hit us up uh, for middle Georgia, for Eastman. Uh, we can get you in contact with those there. If you are in the Henrico or the Richmond, Virginia area, shoot me an email as well, and we will get you connected there as well. Also, if you are a moray or a pastor or whatnot, uh, and you are uh, you have a congregation already established and you want to be a part of a Messianic growing Hebrew congregation uh, of people, of a body of believers, shoot me an email as well, and we will give you a call and build with you. Also be on the lookout. We have different classes coming up as well that we will be teaching on if you want to join those classes uh, as well. Uh, let me also remind you that uh, January 13th through the 14th, right here in Cartersville, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, uh, is the Jeremiah 23 and 3 conference that is going down. 
Don't forget to go on the boomchurchint.org website and you will be able to find the flyer and click on it and it will take you to the link to get your tickets. Don't wait in the last minute uh, for those tickets. We only have so many available uh, that um, it, when they once they run out, uh, you will not be able to get in, okay? Uh, also, uh, if you are interested, if you never celebrated or commemorated Pesach Passover before, uh, in 2023, uh, Boom will be holding Passover here in Atlanta. This is kind of the headquarters where the Passover is. Uh, if you want to join us for Passover, that information will be sent out uh, as well. It will be made known public. Uh, also, uh, if you want to get on the mailing list, and subscribe to get things, you know, get information of what's going on with Boom. Uh, once you go onto our website, you can subscribe there and get the information sent to you as well. Also, and lastly, I'll say this, uh, be on the lookout for a pop-up Shabbat. Pop-up Shabbat, uh, we have about five cities in 2023. We would do pop-up shops or pop-up Shabbat um, in those cities. And we are looking for brothers and sisters who do worship. We're looking for brothers and sisters who scripture read in those cities. And we're looking for uh, brothers and sisters who do uh, praise dance, worship dance, all of that good stuff. We're going to have a full service uh, for one day in a select cities. Okay. So be on the lookout for that as well. Uh, let me see. Let me get some more shout outs. Y'all don't forget to like and share this live. Thumbs it up. Like and share the live. Uh, share it everywhere. All right. Share it everywhere. All right. Don't forget to thumbs that thing up. All right. Thumbs it up. Let's see here. What we what we talk, what we got going on up in here. Uh, Danielle Curry. Uh, shout out to you as well. Christina Brown. All right. Sister Brown was going on. So we got the cab Illinois in the building. We have Orlando, Florida in the building. We have Severn. I think I said that right. Maryland DMV in the building. Uh, what's going on, Minister Casey? Uh, Minister Casey Huey. What's going on? Uh, what it do uh, in this case I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to get with you in a minute I definitely want to interview you on the platform uh, definitely people need to see your content so I'll be getting you on here my Mr. Casey is a part of the Boom Atlanta congregation Era Spikes says troll block sword is sharpened and ready appreciate that hallelujah uh, Marvin Thomas uh, what about Nat Nashville hey uh, we don't have a congregation in Nashville but I have had someone reach out to me before of interest in maybe starting a congregation in Nashville. I don't know um, if you are a uh, moray or anything like that or whatnot, but we can talk. You can send me an email and uh, we can talk about it um, and see what's going on. But send me an email to the Bishop Brown at boomchurchint.org and uh, we can talk about that. All right. Want to make that. Y'all willing. All right, Ace, Ace, that's what's up. Efo Kosi, I hope I said that right. Shalom to you as well, family. Definitely, y'all don't forget to like and share. Uh, Dr. L. Hike will be here. Uh, he will be coming on here uh, in probably the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I started early so that way we can give notifications uh, time to get out. And uh, we're going to go from there. We're going to talk about some 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 serious stuff today. We're going to talk about some DNA. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, just we're going to interview Dr. Aaron L. Hyde. Y'all know how I do. Uh, this is this is is this kind of just journalism for me. And I pray that the information uh, is for you guys as well. Make sure y'all be on y'all best behavior. OK, be on y'all best behavior. Be on your best behavior. All right. We got to as a community. We got to learn to grow and make sure that we understand the subject matter at hand. And so the things that we're talking about, make sure we stay on topic and on subject. So make sure the questions that you ask is related to the subject and the topic. All right, that's what we got to do. We got to grow in that area. But we're getting there. We're getting there, y'all. We're getting there. What's going on? What's going on, cuz? Cuz, yeah, it was last, last minute we made a decision. So bless us to uh, shout out to uh, my cousin, Pastor Kelly. Um, definitely, again, once again, uh, as a reminder, if you are in Narico or in the uh, Richmond, Virginia area, definitely hit me up and I will get you in contact uh, with my cousin ministry, Passion for Reconciliation, out there in Richmond, Virginia or in the Enrico area uh, and uh, get you in contact with him. So shoot me an email and I can get you in contact with him as well. All right. So, um, all right, we're keeping it going here. Uh, so we're excited about everything. And I want you guys definitely to Fayetteville, 
I'm from the Fayetteville Congress. <laughs> who who not changed? Who is this that changed it? Who is that E4 Kosi? Oh, oh. <laughs> man, I didn't recognize your dog on YouTube name, man. <laughs> shout out to shout out to E4 Kosi. All right, shout out to E4 Kosi uh, from uh, the, uh, hold on, let's see here. What? Oh, Elder Rams, I don't know how your comments got disabled on your phone, man. You must be did something to it. I don't know. We're gonna have to figure that out. I don't know how your comments disabled on your phone. All right. Um, you might have to go back out and come back in or something. I don't know, Elder Rams. Um, I ain't know that was <laughs> Efo Cozy. Shout out to Efo Cozy. Um, a man, he just dropped the book. Shout out to him uh, as well. I have fam in Richmond, Virginia. All right, Alexandra Leggett, if you have family in Richmond, Virginia, and they interested, definitely hit us up and we can get them in contact with uh, with um, with uh, Cuz Kelly out there. We woke now uh, in his ministry, Pastor for Reconciliation, all right. San Diego, hey, San Diego, I think you may be from, uh, I know we're, we're, um, we're trying to get things going. Oh, there it is right there. Let's roll, y'all. Here he is. Right, I think it's greetings, greetings, Dr. L. Hike. Greetings, Will. How are you doing? I'm doing well, sir. I really appreciate you and thank you for your time for coming on. I know you're a very busy uh, uh, man, and I, I want to definitely appreciate you uh, for coming on and taking out the time uh, to come on here. We're gonna, we kind of want to get into some things. I just kind of got, got started here a few um, minutes ago to give the notifications time to come. We are live. Uh, I'm recording because sometimes Facebook, I mean, YouTube decides to kind of sometimes take certain videos down. So I just want to make sure that it's recorded. I want you to know that I'm recording it. Um, okay. And so um, we're going to be on here for a few minutes. I'm not, I'm not going to hold you too long. Our brothers and sisters in the chat, uh, we have none other than, uh, Dr. Aaron L. Hike. Uh, Dr. Aaron L. Hike, do you want to uh, greet yourself? Uh, greet, I mean, greet the people who are on here on our live now before we get into the conversation. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Aaron uh, L. Hike, and I'm um, happy to talk to you today about genetics, science in general, um, and about my work. Awesome. And also about this uh, ancient DNA origins uh, website that we've launched a couple of months ago. I think it will be a lot of interest to everybody. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited about that because don't, when you sent me the link to, I jumped on it immediately. And uh, it's interesting, doctor. <laughs> doctor is a lot interesting. of work, a lot of work. You know, that's that's one of the reasons that got me into this field. And uh, that was over 10 years ago. And only now it's it's feasible to actually doing it. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. And, and it's amazing because when I got my results back, I I was like, okay, this is interesting. You know, because when people look at your, you know, certain hue of complexion of people, uh, you automatically put them in a box because of the society and the, the race construct and things like that. So it's automatically like, well, okay, I'm this color in complexion, but my DNA says something else. What, what What's going on with this? So, and 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 the thing that I, I've done probably about maybe uh, five DNA tests, and most of them generally focus on a specific haplogroup group in a specific area, like maybe the West Coast of Africa and things like that, but they don't go to the ancient level of things. I think that this is where you, what you guys have done is, mm -hmm. is really more amazing than what most people who take DNA tests know about. And it's amazing. We already get into the conversation. So I guess we can just kind of go there. I'm going to um, hold my very long answer then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Also, I, I, want, I want to talk about this because when I first heard about you, um, this was probably around maybe 2014, I think 2015 or something, somewhere around that date. And it was also dealing with some subject matters 
that a lot of people don't feel is too popular uh, in discussion. And and you're kind of like me, Mr. Controversy. I kind of like it in a way, but I think it's it's good to discover and talk about. So I want to, if you don't, if if it's okay with you, I went to your YouTube channel, um, and there's a couple of videos on there, five minutes. Or so, is it okay with you if I go ahead and play one of those videos? I want to play two, but I'm going to play one and you can elaborate and then we can kind of go into the DNA conversation about the website and everything. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So let's get into this, uh, you guys. I'm going to share my screen here and I'm going to go to Dr. Iran, uh YouTube channel here. So let's see here. All right. The question we've been trying to answer is a question that has been under debate for the past couple of decades, mainly between linguists. And that question is the origin of Yiddish language. Now, Yiddish is a language that consists of German, Hebrew, and Slavic elements uh, written with Aramaic letter, and had, it has been spoken since the 9th century. Uh, the prevailing view is that Yiddish is an old German dialect, where the alternative view is that Yiddish is a Slavic language that used to have uh, Slavic words and grammar, but over time it shaded its Slavic lexicon and adopted German words uh, while retaining the Slavic grammar. In a sense, Yiddish speakers sounds like Yoda from the Star Wars universe. Yoda's language also consists of words in English, real and made up one, like walkie and Jedi, but the grammar is off. Um, Yiddish also consists of 251 words for just buy and sell, suggesting it was invented by traders. Language, geography, and genetics are all connected. The further I move away from England, the more dissimilar uh, the DNA and languages of the people that I will encounter will become. So if we have a tool that converts uh, genetics into geography or languages, we can find our answer. Fortunately, uh, in 2014, we published the Geographic Population Structure, or GPS, tool that does exactly that. GPS converts DNA information into geography. So to answer the hypothesis of where Yiddish speakers came from, we apply GPS to the genome of Yiddish speakers to find where their DNA is from. Surprisingly, GPS took us to northeastern Turkey. Uh, at first, we did not understand the result, but when we looked at some old books, we found four ancient villages named Iskenaz, Eskenaz, Ashenaz, and Ashkuz, names that may be derived from the word Ashkenaz. This place resides on a hub of trade networks. Uh, this is where silk roads and other uh, trade roads converge. We speculate that at that time, Iranian traders uh, Iranian Jewish traders supplying the Silk Road, moving merchandise from east uh, to west, from Asia to Europe, um, identified this region uh, and made it their center. Uh, they converted the local population uh, and to maintain their monopoly on trade, they invented a secret language, one that only Jews can speak while they remain conversant in all other languages. With their secret language, they could move all their merchandise back and forth and move information uh, between East and West to maintain their monopoly. Shortly after they invented the language, they relocated the young Ashkenazic Judaism was relocated to Khazaria and some 500 years later, when Khazaria was destroyed, they moved to Eastern Europe. At that time, the network collapsed and Ashkenazic Jews separated from their brethren of the Iranian uh, Jews and the two populations went their separate ways. Um, Yiddish was stopped being used as a trade language um, and was now start accumulating words in German while retaining the Slavic grammar. Our results are consistent with the Slavic hypothesis suggesting that Yiddish has a Slavic origin um, and that it has originated in ancient Ashkenaz that is located in northeastern Turkey. By applying GPS to the genome of Yiddish speakers, we were able to find ancient Ashkenaz um, and villages um, where the DNA of Yiddish speakers um, was, has originated probably over 1500, 2000 uh, years ago. Uh, the search for ancient Ashkenaz has been going on for about uh, maybe over 1000 years. 
um, and now we believe we found it, of course this needs to be verified with archaeological evidence. All right. Did everybody hear that? Did everybody hear that really good? Because uh, I know um, sometimes when I don't unmute, or well, when I don't mute, sometimes it has an echo, but I hope everyone heard that really good. Uh, Dr. Erhite, are you a troublemaker? Do you, do you like causing trouble? Of course. <laughs> what, what, what's life is for? Just going straight lines? Hey, that's kind of life is. This is Matrix. This is not life. <laughs> oh man, I know you 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 got a you took a lot of heat for coming. It, not only you, but uh, Professor Slowmo and and others like yourself that's over that uh, in the land of Israel. Why why are you guys causing these problems like this? Why? What? Uh, first, there is really a genuine pleasure in uh, calling uh, controversies and uh, in doing really good science. But, um, but, but second, you, you need to understand science. You and, and maybe the public have, have some kind of image of science as, uh, as an institution that produces um, outputs that are always correct and always true. And hey, look, this so many people agrees with me, hence I'm correct. That's not what science is about. Science is about challenging controversy. Challenge is about saying, look, the earth does uh, revolve around the sun, not the other way around. Uh, this is what science is. It is about making the next step. The next step may be some, but something that other people did not think of, so they may wish they had thought about the next step. And it's about stepping out of the line, of course, at the price of being perhaps unpopular with certain groups, because once again, uh, either jealousy or, or disagreement or, or comfort in being in the same position. Science does not make progress unless somebody stepping out of the group and saying, um, this is what I think. And this is what true scientists do in whatever field they are. They're going and do something new. Um, you can, you may call it trouble. You can call it being uh, genuine. We can being, call it original. I know what you mean, but they all mean the same exact thing. Uh, Shlomo was, of course, um, uh, not not the first, but the first to have, let's say, popularized mm -hmm. uh, the idea that not only uh, Ashkenazic Jews are from Khazaria, but that all Jewish groups. Um, have originated through a uh, process of conversion wherever they were. Uh, that was a very bold move for historians wow. who stood on very, very little uh, genetic grounds, because he's not a geneticist. Right. Yeah. He read the, the necessary biological literature, which was very scant at best. We're talking about blood groups, very, very primitive biology uh, at first. And he had to face all these geneticists who thought they knew so much better because they'll deal with the DNA and they told him, uh, no, you're wrong. And he had to stand there by himself and said, no, what you're saying makes no sense. So quite, quite bold for a historian, but of course he was right. And he published his book in 2009, The Invention of the Jewish People. And my study was published 2012, focusing on Ashkenazic Jews, confirming that and again, it's not something you need to understand. Genetic studies and all studies in population genetics, by large, are being written to present results in a certain way. Yeah. They're not presenting the truth. I wow. published a paper challenging uh, principal component analysis. It's one of the most common tools in uh, population genetics, uh, the foremost used uh, being tool. It's also in other fields. We're looking at 250 a thousand papers that have been used this method. I showed that anyone can generate almost every result that they want with PCA. Um, all these Jewish studies that you may think about uh, showing these or other results, Jews are clustering uh, separate, we're clustering with Palestinians, or are clustering, uh, hence they're linked to, to Israel and so forth. Guys, all of them were generated by the researchers. Wow. All of them. Wait, wait, wait. So hold, 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 Dr. Aaron. I, Ron, Dr. Ron, I want you to say that again. So are you saying that all of the people who've done the research that's in favor of cert, of certain group of people, pretty much they were all from the that same group of people or that population? So are you saying that 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 the work is not that the work is not unbiased in some ways? Or are you saying that it's very, very all biased? All population genetic studies that you read about in the newspapers. There was the recent uh, Jews, uh, Ashkenazic Jewish skeletons in England are, are, are Ashkenazic Jews. And there is now today in Germany. 
all of them, all the results in these papers could be easily influenced by the scientists who could decide whether a certain group would look Jews or non-Jews. Wow. Yeah, that, 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 they, I thought you're talking about controversy. So are you going to talk about this study? <laughs> <laughs> so are you, are you familiar? There, were, there was a, um, I just recently heard about this, probably about maybe 10 years ago. There was a Wayne State study on on Jews. Are you familiar with that Wayne State study? No. Uh, uh, Weinstein study? It was what a, did you uh, say? It was a, a university, uh, I guess Wayne State University did a mm -hmm. did a um, a review on 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 Jews that are in the land of Israel as I guess being uh, authentic or whatnot. I'm not too familiar with the fullness of but I'll email you the the the, the link to it so you can kind of check it out and give your analysis on it. Um, but from what you're saying, um, from, from the, the little bit that I understand, I know that some of those who did the Wayne State study, they were Israeli, you know, I guess geneticists from Israel. And uh, one particular person who was bringing, bringing up the such study uh, said that, there, that, that he felt that, though, it was biased towards it because of who was doing the study. Uh, he felt it, it shouldn't have been more predominantly uh, it should have been other type of geneticists, I guess, versus those that are from the land of Israel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not familiar with this one, but Nurit Kirsch, she's an Israeli scientist. She showed that studies on Jews done by Israeli are far more biased toward these, let's call it Zionist narrative, oh. uh, than studies by done by Jews outside of Israel, uh, which are the second bias, then studies done by non-Jews outside of Israel, these are the least biased, and she showed it very nicely. And she demonstrated the reason that the, there was a strong government support to, again, emphasize the Zionist narrative. I'm not in love with this term, Zionist narrative, yeah, uh, yeah. but that's just, just the, the point is, show that modern day Jews are connected to the land of Israel through genetics. And that's that's a hard thing uh, to do, right? Because uh, there, it's difficult to find address in the genes. And the way it was done, um, which which may sound counterintuitive to some people, which because it is, the idea was to distinguish Jews from every other population. So they would be sort of isolated, sort of their own race, but at the same time close to Palestinians because the, mm -hmm. and, and Bedouins, like uh, the more uh, the Levantine population. However, you may not use that argument to argue that Levantine's population are native to the region. Only Jews are, even right. though they're the one who took you to this region, because otherwise you will be in space. <laughs> uh, right. We're putting populations on the map and then we're showing Jews are close to them or not. But the same logic cannot be applied to uh, this population. So that was how those uh, studies were uh, written. And sort of, again, talking about the bias in science, it's confirmed each, uh, confirming each other and supporting each other and, saying, and, and, re and referring each other. So you may think it looks like an actual science, except that it is not. Wow, that's, that's, that's very interesting. So let, I, guess, I guess this whole thing, let's kind of transition into, because the conversation comes up about um, the Kazarian. And, and I know Arthur Kessler, you know, that wrote, I know you're familiar, very familiar with that. Why is it? Why does it seem as though Arthur Kessler's work or his book or whatnot, as well as yourself, it seems as though people have went into overdrive to try to discredit Arthur Kessler's work, as well as I know on on your channel as well. And I'll pull up the video um, and just show the people without kind of going into the whole thing. They can watch it uh, later. But on the Kazarian theory or the Kazarians and maybe some of many of the Jews, which you know, convert into the Kazarian whole thing. But talk about that. Talk about the, 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 the Kazarian. Uh, uh, yeah, gladly. Uh, well, first of all, let me start by uh, explaining a little something about uh, the Kazaria. And, and this is not some kind of um, anti-Jewish scheme. It has right, been studied right, by yeah. Israeli scholars. There was a conference in Jerusalem, in the Hebrew University, bringing experts all over the world to talk about uh, Khazaria and the origin of Jews. They produced a book uh, about, about it, an excellent book, contributed to my many hist Israeli historians and, and Jews and non-Jewish scholars. 
and, uh, and, and they had uh, one of the first books, which was not translated to, to, uh, to English, unfortunately, you have to uh, uh, read, read about it in Hebrew, uh, was written by Israeli scholars named uh, Pola, okay, who was uh, in Shlomo San's department. So this is, if you have any, any ideas in your mind that this is some kind of anti-Jewish plot, you're listening to too much uh, propaganda. Now, why do uh, people dislike that? For two different and opposing reasons. One of them, they like to think that Jews are a race so they can dislike Jews and discriminate against them. And that was the case of David Duke, this uh, grand uh, wizard from, from, from Louisiana. He has a webpage showing me and Shlomo and, uh, and our friends from the 13th tribe there and claim, hey, look at their shape of their nose. So, you know, we, we may not have the skin complexion, but uh, we may have nose issues <laughs> there. Um, and, uh, and that was his case. He's by no means uh, supporting. So he was challenging the, the findings of the theory, not because he's a big fan of Jews, but he's a big fan of the concept of Jewish race that he can later discriminate against. If there is no Jewish race, then, then they're like all other people from one way or another. So this, these are one group of people. The other group of people, um, that are uh, opposing this theory uh, may have been subjected to Russian propaganda because Russians do not like the idea of uh, having a Khazar kingdom in the southern borders, uh, controlling the regions and defeating them uh, for quite a big uh, part of the battle. So it's part of the whole Russian uh, ego that we're all familiar with, unfortunately, far too well. Uh, but and, and, and another part of that group are simply people who have issues with their identity. And let me tell you something, being Jewish is, well, has never been easy, but it is far easier today than it has ever been. Um, and that's part of the problem. Um, if there is minimum discrimination, and if Jews are the most powerful ethnic group in America, second or first only to uh, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, doctor. Hold on doctor. All right. Can you rewind just a little bit? You said that Jews are the most powerful. I had, I, I've heard this statement, said recently when I, when I had uh rabbi weiss who's a who's a Hasidic jew and he's at you know he's against zionism could you say that again i don't think people really understand that i'm not sure i fully understand i'm quoting a survey that i okay, recall okay okay in terms of uh social uh social economic status mm -hmm. which also encompass politics assets education influence Jews are number one, um, Iranians are number two. Okay, okay. And like I said, whether the, the, the order is reversed or not, I'm not sure. Um, gotcha. Yeah, um, and if I may continue, uh, yeah. and again, uh, when you're part of this group and hopefully uh, live to, uh, to, to satisfy the, 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 the criteria of this group and not just, <laughs> you know, somewhere at the bottom, you have very little, um, uh, there is very little that stops you in your way. Uh, and, um, and then you start asking, what is it about me that makes me a Jew? And the answer is that a lot of people, I don't know. Because you eat non-kosher food. Of course, you don't go to the synagogue or only go, only go on high holidays. You don't really do a, a lot of the uh, commandments. It's impossible to do all of them. There's so many of them. And some of them wow. are for women. Some <laughs> of them are not even relevant for our times. So no one person can come and say, I'm doing all the mitzvahs. Now, Reform Jews adopted a rather redundant principle in Judaism, which is tikkun olam, correcting of the, correction of the world, which I personally admire. Mm -hmm. But once again, we, it is fine to argue how we're doing it, but it is something that is, that is very uh, difficult uh, to do nonetheless, but they made it their motto, which is absolutely fine. Uh, but some people don't have the means to do it or they cannot do it. And at, at some point you're asking yourself, what, what am I, where am I come from? These kind of difficult to answer questions, and then at some point or another, you define yourself by some connection with, with, with Israel and, and, and the ancient stories, which is very, very popular to do because it's so easy. You just have to believe in it. And then somebody right. comes and tells you that story. Uh, you know what? It's just a story, just like the Exodus in, in Egypt. Uh, that, that didn't happen. It cannot happen. We have no evidence that it happened. So what? You're not going to do Passover anymore? <laughs> So you're not going to support Israel anymore because this is not where your roots are. So it's like, 
one big mess. So people don't like that. <laughs> All that's right. A bit of a long answer to your question. No, no, that's 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 fine. That's fine. Um, so let's let's kind of transition into the site. Okay, so let me share my screen because I think this is definitely very important. And then if you guys at uh towards the end, if you have any questions for Dr. Iran, uh definitely put them in the chat. Uh make sure that the subject of the conversation or the question is based upon the subject of the conversation in which we're having. Sometimes I know y'all can veer off a little bit, but but that's okay. So let's let me get get into this. Let me share my screen. I want to go to the website here. Let's see. Uh, let's share the screen. This is my Zoom meeting. Where are we at? Okay. Here we go. All right. Can you see that, Dr. Iran? I can. Okay, that black screen thing on uh, on your. Uh... Oh, hold on. Let me try to. Do, do you see it? Because last time a student showed me, he had problem with their screen. What about now? Can you? Can... It's it's fine. Now it's the bottom right. I didn't realize it can be moved. All right, tell me about it later. I'm I'm fascinated already. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me. Uh, uh, this so this website. Is a genetic testing website. You can either get the kit or upload your file from any company as long as it's autosomal file. So don't send me Y uh, DNA stuff. Um, this will compare your DNA to the ancient DNA of people who lived in the past. The goal is not to tell you you're 50% English or 20% uh, Levantines. That's never the goal. It's, mm. it's, it's, we're not asking modern day people who they think they are. And then we tell you, you're looking like uh, uh, Dr. Brown or Dr. el -Fai. No, no. All the comparisons are done with very people who lived long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, so every test has actual people behind it uh, that she will compare the DNA one, one with each person in that test. So in the Vikings, for example, we have 27 Vikings. Two of them, we have their full names. There was a love story in there. One of them was a married woman. The other guy was a single. They had uh, an affair. Unfortunately, they got caught. Uh, they were they were executed Viking styles, which means mm. uh, 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 you know uh, uh, suffocations and then uh, departing of the body parts and then hanging. I'm not sure really what's the point of doing that after you already got the person. But you know that, that's Viking. We don't ask these kind of questions. <laughs> uh, and I don't want to even tell you how the woman was executed, but these are actual people for for whom we have the names. Uh, we have all the 13 uh, Israelite tribes. There are 12, of course, but uh, Joseph had two sons, so it's Menashe and Ephraim. So it's 13 tribes. Uh, and there is Greeks uh, and uh, Paleo-Indians, so there, there are Chumash. Um, and if you click on the, uh, will I ask you to click on the all products? Just want to show you something cool that we added. Okay, all uh, products. All product, and if you all click right. on the a share tribe, so the first one on the right. Uh, I'm trying to find um, it. Uh, it's I? on the first row on the right. Oh, okay, first row, right? I'm right on this row. Uh, my right. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to yeah, find this one. This one. No, no, no. You oh, were there. Okay, this one here. You see the per the person with the with the with the tree on it? Oh yeah, it's my Asher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, click, click on it. Oh, click on that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Click on that video picture, please, under the the icon. Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah. Play, please. So that's where all the skeletons are from. And the and then we added these uh, these these boats. This is the Asher tribe, so they um, they're from of Greek origin, which is now we know well Mycenaeans, uh, uh, which is now we know because we have actually the ancient DNA. We don't we we know their origin. We can tell where they're from. Wow. Uh, and then we have these altars. You may not see it very well, so there is uh, a bit animation there. And and the whole point really is to. Um, Thank you so much. The point is just not to give you percentage like all other tests, like you're 20%, this 30%. Mm -hmm. that you know, it's to, if indeed you are, to get you to be part of this culture, there is all this information we provided about every test. There is information at the individual uh, ancient person level, who they are, where they came from, what they used to be, um, and, and how 
is your DNA fit in that culture? Because if it came from this culture, it happened many, many years ago, but what could your ancestors have been as part of this tribe? And again, if it's in the data, if it's not, then you're gonna have fun reading. Um, and so this is what these tests are designed to do. If you're scared by the price, you are absolutely welcome to do a subscription. This way you can have unlimited tests for, for very small price. And we have, uh, uh, yeah, we actually have a coupon, which I can give you the code right now, if that's okay, okay which you will. Yes, yeah, that's fine. If anybody wants to, uh, Dr. Aaron is gonna give a coupon um, discount for the price. Uh, so if you guys want to go ahead and uh, make a note of that, those who are in the chat, uh, once yeah. you give it out, if you could type it, uh, I guess type it in the chat. Hold on, I think he sent it to me. Hold on, let me see here. So I can read it. Um, it's ADO, Ancient DNA Origins, small caps, and then uh, 401211. So that okay. will give you 40% off of all the products, all the tests and the subscription, just not the, the swabbing kits because it costs a lot of money. Yeah, did, did anybody did anybody make a note of that? Uh, I have it here, but make a note of that in the chat if you have. If not, he'll read it one more time, but I need someone to make a note of that in the chat. Uh, we have about 80 people in the chat live right now, so okay. I want to make sure that... Um, I'll, I'll read it again. So it's okay. um, small caps, A-D-O, and then four zero one two one one. Yeah, A D O four zero one two one one. All right. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor Iran. No, thank for, you for, for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, so I guess I I want to I want to ask you a question about me. I, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I did like five DNA tests, right? So yep. I, one. Are you familiar with Jet Match? Yep. Okay, so I did jet match. Jet match gave gave me some some good stuff. Some you know some modern the limbas, uh, Jews, some Yemenite Jews. When I when I did this DNA test with you guys, mm. and let me read just a little bit of this percentage. <laughs> this kind of blew my mind. So I'll just give maybe three of them. Okay. Israel Bedouin. This is like like this is one of them, which is I'm just gonna read from based on the. The chart of here, it says Israel Bedouin, it says Yemenite Jew, and it says Moroccan Jew, Tunisian Jew, uh, Algerian Mozabite. Hmm. Wait, what, what is going on here? I, Did I'm, I give I'm, this? Uh, whose results are these? These are mine. Yeah, yeah, but what test? This is from the, uh, I think I did the... the I is this the jet match? No, no, no. This is from the ancient DNA origins. Can you show me the screen? All Hold the on. tests here are ancient. There is no way I would tell you anything about Tunisian Jews. Hold on. I'm reading here from... Hold on. I'm reading it from the screenshot that I, that I took of mine. It just has here, it's under the DNA test kit. When I paid for it, I uploaded it through JetMatch to the site here. Yeah. It gave me genetic similarity. Is that a genetic similarity? I think that's what it says. It, had, only, mm -hmm. it has the list. It says Arabia, Middle yeah. East, Iraq, Caucasus. Ca uh, are you, Will, are you in the population-wide results? Hold on. I'm not sure here. Hold on. I just... Once I uh, want to show us your results on this screen. Hold on, let me try to get it to it here. I, I don't know how you feel about your genetic privacy, but uh, yeah, I got it. Let me get my. Uh, <laughs> if you want, I can show screens. Uh, I can share my screen and show you uh, what what's in this test. Okay, yeah. Let me let me share. I'll share the. Uh, I'll let me see. I guess I can make you a. A uh, host, and then yeah, click on the share screen. And just let me share my thing. Okay, hold on. Because right now I'm disabled. Okay, I've made you a co-host. You should. Yeah. No, I need to be able to. Show. Oh, now I can. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So can you see my I... screen? Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. So I'm going to my account. Uh, my results. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do Viking if that's okay with everybody. It's okay. not really my DNA. Now let me show you uh which one did you say it is? This one is the I did the the I think I did 
I chose the, I think it's, it's an option for Levite and Judah Levi. and those things Levi like is that. The only one that may not be in my list. I'll take the uh, share tribe if nobody minds. Okay. Uh, view my results. Uh, like I said, my my sample, not a great example. I'm sorry. I'm going to show you the Viking. The file that I used is far more Scandinavian than anything. Okay. So the first part shows you a breakdown of your ancient ancestry. Yep. Yep. To regions. Yeah. Yep. Um, this one has the individual Vikings in the test. So you can see how similar you are to each one of them. And you see, I'm clicking on the names and you see how their story changed. So this yeah, skeleton yeah. was excavated here and there. Right. Uh, I can click on learn more that will put me on the other screen. So every individual Viking and every individual in every test has, has its own page. Right. Where you can see uh, his Y Havel group, for example. We can see if it matches yours. So I've got this kind of ID yeah. card. We drew we drew those coins. Okay. Again, just just to, we want to bring it to life. You need to understand a lot of these are just bones find in nowhere. I got you. All right. So we did everything we could to bring them back to life and make you relate to them. So this is the breakdown of this engine Viking individuals. This is how it is close to the other Vikings. Gonna see if it was uh um native or not uh, so you can play with that i like to do this uh this is their modern day legacy so which um other uh sorry ancient uh genetic legacy which other ancient people are similar to this mm -hmm. so now i'm gonna go back to the screen which i think you mentioned uh, population wide results. So that's uh, th then we have uh, here we have lots of uh, stories about ancient individual and right. this is the history of ancient people. So we want to make sure you have enough literature for all the uh, Thanksgiving slash uh, uh, the Christmas uh, meetings and family stuff. If you get bored, you can always pop back and read stories. So what so this the, what, is the gen yeah, that's the, what I was going to ask about the genetic legacy. And the genetic legacy is what exactly what was left of these ancient Vikings today. Okay. So what, 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 what about the modern genetic similarities? Yep, exactly. So what, 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 done, what, is, what, yeah, what is all of that? We, want, we told you how similar you are to this culture, right? It was 15%, okay. 20%, uh, but what does that mean? Is this a lot? Is this too much? Is it not enough? Right. So we want to give you context to those results. So yeah. these are um, how Finnish are close to the Vikings. So you're not as Vikings as uh, Finnish and Norway. Okay. So these are okay. just modern day populations to whom we applied the test, just like you did. And now yeah, you can that, put that, results that's, into context. that's what I was re that's what I was reading from when I was saying about the Arabian about about the Bedouins. Yeah, yeah. So it's not that you're a Bedouin. This is just the result okay. for Bedouins. Oh, but results for Bedouin. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah makes sense. Know, yeah. All these companies. So I don't know if I have Bedouins here. You have Middle East there. I don't. I may not. I may not uh, have Middle East because uh, again, uh, it's not really relevant to this population. Uh, so uh, I, if I take another test, it would change. Okay. Uh, point. Point is, um, all these genetic testing that you've taken, they always told you you're twenty percent this, thirty percent that. Yeah. But what does it mean? Is it is it good? Is it bad? Have your parents right. been good? I mean, you have no idea. There is no context. Uh, gotcha. So this is what this is for. You now you've got context. Now you understand how to place yourself in in the in the universe. Mm. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. Anybody have any question? Um, <laughs> somebody say did say what? Uh, we have about uh, about ten more minutes with Doctor Iran. If you have any questions, go ahead and put it. In the chat, I know people have a lot of a lot of questions here. So if you have any question, um, somebody tell my man, it look like I'm gonna need some coffee. <laughs> um, any questions? Go ahead and put it in the in the uh, comments uh, so that way we can read. I know you guys probably maybe eight to ten seconds behind us. Uh, it's about ninety people uh, in the chat live. So um, any questions? Uh, go ahead, Doctor uh, Dr. Ron. If you have anything else you want to share, while these while we're waiting on them to type uh, the questions. I'm trying to remember, there was something I wanted to tell you. Um, really struggling to remember. Um, no, but I just come back from a gender equality meeting, and we were uh, shown the numbers which I already knew about the disproportional number of women and minorities in the academia. 
Right. Um, I'm happy to answer these questions as well. If you have any, if this is something you considered, but you feel it's too difficult, too uh, elitist, too white, too anything, um, I'm happy to uh, to answer questions of this because it was very, again, thought provoking, uh, provocating meetings. Um, honestly, uh, not sure the problem is here. The problem is that um, the certain uh, math, physics, they're getting fewer women, fewer minorities. We're not, the university is not the one making the decision to reject right. these people. They're making it. The problem is not with us. The problem is that way earlier. On the other hand, we have fewer women professors. So again, that's not at my level. It is here, but not at my level. It starts later on when say, uh, women and minorities already in the academia, and then they just drop out for some reason. Um, yeah, so there, yeah. there are all these issues just as well, not exactly uh, part of my studies, but it is part of our world and our culture. And if any of the listeners um, have any questions about it or, or want to, uh, to know how to survive in this culture, I'm happy to uh, spend some time chat about this too. Well, we, we have uh, here uh, a question, uh, Brother Arrow Spike, uh, he he goes by the, the YouTube channel, Arrow Spike. Uh, he says, uh, let me see, let me find it. Uh, trying to find this question. Oh, no, no, that was Arrow Spike. It was, uh, uh, Brother Ace A, someone named Ace A says, how is the DNA handled when done? I guess once the DNA is collected, he's. I guess he's asking how is it handled, or how is it, you know, the process of, you know, the coming up with the results and who you connected to and and all that stuff like that. Uh, the, I, I assume he means his own DNA, not the mommy's DNA. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm. Yep, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I think that's maybe what he's saying. Yeah. Um, if you're uploading a file, your file stays on a secure server and you can delete it at any time. Your file is not being sold, uh, uh, licensed like other companies do. We have no contract with Pharma. Uh, you see, I put it here. We'll never sell your data to third party. This is not our business. We also, mm -hmm. you can be certain of that because we don't ask you about uh, any type of phenotype. The data that you provide is absolutely useless if you don't say, Look, I have this uh, rare cancer or look, I have the gene that makes me live until 200 years. If you don't say this, we cannot guess that from your data. And we don't ask these kind of questions. So, yeah, your, your data is on a secure server and you can delete it at any time. Um, oh. If you're sending a kit, you're ordering a kit, you're going to swab, you're going to send it to a lab. The lab will uh, extract the DNA and send us again the file. Uh, they will eventually destroy the kit and, and your DNA in it. They're not in the business of keeping data uh, from random people uh, at all. So your your privacy is uh, guaranteed to the best of our abilities. Awesome. Tra uh, Travis says, Dr. Iran, can the Israelites show up genetic as more than one Y DNA haplogroup? Yeah, absolutely. They're quite diverse. Uh, we've seen T, we've seen J's, we've seen CT's, we've seen E1. So I'm getting a lot of emails from um, African community asking if they're related to the ancient Israelites. I think possibly. There are mm. ancient Israelites with the E1 uh, and other letters and numbers uh, in the data set. Uh, and yep. like I showed you with the Viking person, this test will answer this question as well. So I've been getting those questions for years, <laughs> well, but I could never answer. There were not, there were no ancient DNA samples, but now actually there are. You know what I wanted to tell you? In 2009, when I got into, I finished my PhD, I started postdoc at School of uh, Medicine, Johns Hopkins, and I wanted to work on the ancient uh, Israelite because there were so many studies about Jews and told me, mm -hmm. you can't, there are no studies. Like, then how come you're studying Jews? How do you link them to the, uh, to the land of Israel and whatnot? And then I read this study and I was like, it's all deception. <laughs> there were no ancient Israelites. How can you possibly say anything about a modern group without an ancient reference group that you're telling me and hear how we prove they're connected? No, they're not. This is bullshit. <laughs> and, and this is what my work studies. You can compare them to the closest possible reference groups. 
Yes, but we again need to pretend those groups did not change for thousands of years, which is I'm fine with pretending that. But the way those studies were done, they never compared them to group from uh, the Kafkazos and, and the Khazaria boundaries. They always compared them with the group where they wanted to see the highest similarity, in this case, Palestinians and Bedouins. So when you look at Jews and you compare them to Palestinians and Bedouins and to the other reference, which for some reason was uh, uh, English, they came up closer to the, the Middle Eastern ones. Mm. Hence the conclusion, Jews are from the Middle East. Like, no. You're asking, you're framing the question according to the answer you want to get. Now add the actual groups from the Kafkazos, you will see how all the Jews are going to the Kafkazos. And that I was the my study was the first to do that. It's a very simple question. You would agree with me, right? Are they closest to Middle Eastern or or Near Eastern population? Very simple question. There's no uh, uh, bias about it, except they didn't do it because they knew what's going to happen. Now, everybody sits in their lab and generating their own results, and then they publish whatever it is that they want to publish. They just did not want to publish that. And my study was the first to do that. Um, wow. And and that study went and become one of the hundred most read studies of that year because a lot of people were so excited to see it for the first time. You know, it wasn't hidden anywhere. It was there. It was just people did not look at it. And now if you grow up in Israel and you go to the kind of school that I went, you wouldn't see it either. We got a couple more before you get out of here. It says, yeah. uh, uh, Mark Jewherd. Uh, for Dr. Elhite, can the Y DNA be used to trace your lineage accurately? Uh, depends on what you consider accurate. Um, you have a y, certain Y chromosome. A person who lives 200 years may have the same Y chromosome, but he may not be your ancestor. Wow. Uh, you guys may have the same Y chromosome, but so many other people uh, can have it. So if you have the full Y chromosome of you and this other person, which is very really difficult with ancient samples, then you have a stronger base to make this kind of claim. Mm. Okay. And yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we woke now. Uh, question, Dr. Elhai. Can he, can he explain the genetic distances among the Jewish community? Um, yeah, I can absolutely do it because we're now, uh, we just finished a very uh, large study about that. Uh, may I just uh, supplement my previous answer? Um, before the genetic testing uh, 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 were made available commercially, two studies were done that started this era. The first one is the Levite study. It was absolutely horrible. They just looked at people who with the surname of Levite. Uh, one third of them had the same Y haplogroup, and they decided that the ancient Levites must have the same Y haplogroups. And this is the kind of bullshit study that they published. Study number one. Study number two was done on the uh, descendants of uh, President Jefferson. Um, it was said that he had the affair with uh, Sally Hemings, that I'm a slave, and they traced his family tree and they studied the descendants. Now, Jefferson did not have. Uh, kids, uh, the male survivors, but there were his uncle was, which is fine, some white half group. And they concluded that some of the siblings did have the Jefferson family Y half a group. But they did not conclude that there was, there were Jefferson's kids, because once again, you may have the same mutations, but not be in this family. However, it was likely because they all had their, their family tree with, with, uh, with, with uh, Sally uh, Hemings. So I'm giving you these two exam studies so you can see how what a cautious uh, science uh, a scientist do and what uh, you know uh, buzz looking scientists do. But both these studies were very popular and they both influenced the creations of genetic testing companies. The second question: um, What we did now was uh, collect all the. Uh, uh, genomes of uh, Jews worldwide, not, not just Ashkenazi Jews. And we calculate the um, identity by descent, which is the same way uh, genetic testing companies are using to find family relatives. And we did it uh, for Jews and non-Jews, which was again, a no brainer, but a novelty in genetic studies because that's not how, what genetic studies want you to take from their studies. They want you to take that all the Jews are close to each other and that they're all going back to Israel by association of just being close, which is again, another nonsense. We compare Jews to non-Jews and to Jews. 
And all of a sudden, what did we see? Well, sort of what we expected, but not uh, exactly. Ukrainian Jews were very, very similar to Polish Jews and, Poli and non-Jews. And, and Polish Jews were very similar to uh, Polish non-Jews. So yes, all Eastern European Jews were very, very similar to Eastern European Jews, but they were also close to Sephardic Jews. So they're not exactly separate population. Um, whereas other communities were, again, similar to each other within the communities as expected, but much more similar to their neighbors. So it's like, like all the Jews in the world cluster together genetically, they're not. It's, it's going by communities, which again supports Shomo uh, Sam's thesis, they were all created through events of conversion of local populations into Judaism at one point or another. Wow, so mostly pretty much you would say, I guess conversion would be? Exactly. Okay, all right, so uh, brothers, we have two more questions we're gonna let Dr. Aaron get, uh, get out of here and and uh, and whatnot. This has, been, this has been beautiful. I thank you so much once again. This has almost been, for those that don't know, this is we've been working almost two years of talking to each other back and forth in email trying to get this thing going my, up because he was working on this my project. apologies i like <laughs> to come to talks uh prepared and having websites in the air rather than saying oh we may launch this website one day and covid and all put the damp on our efforts but i'm so happy we can talk about it and talk science and i had lovely time talking to you and answering audience questions um, I apologize for having to cut short. I mean, Sweden, okay. it gets dark at four. Okay. Uh, okay. And getting home at night is not pleasant. I can take, if there are any more questions, I can take a few more minutes. Okay. Uh, we're we're, we're going to take one more and let, let Dr. Aaron get out of here. And if, and, and when his schedule is open, oh, you know, we, we hopefully he'll, he'll be able to come back. Um, let's see here. One absolutely. more question. Uh, let me find something that, that kind of, uh, oh man, I can't, I might may not be able to find it. Uh, I kind of lost it. It was it was something referring to. Okay, here it is. Uh, his be his beautiful his beautiful truth. Her question is, uh, Doctor, my my black husband has Y, uh, I guess chromosome I S eight five twenty two, but I can't find a definite locale. Is that Eurasian or Levantine? I'm sorry, I S. Yes, I S. There is no such thing. I five. I don't hold on. Uh, it's it's goes letter number letter number. Okay, she may have typed it wrong or something, but um, I think that may be it. If not, we're gonna let you go. Um, uh, no, no, let me answer okay. uh, our clients, uh, listener. Okay. I'm going to uh, try to answer her question really quickly. I five. That's rare. I'm looking at an ancient DNA database we put together last year right now for you and here let me share my screen it's kind of fun i think people can see it so this is ancient dna you see all these people oh. this is the age look they're all very very ancient okay. here i have the country here i have the location this is the half of group so you said i uh well hopefully the is is i5 unfortunately ah not in the data i'll show you the eyes <laughs> oh yeah she said uh maybe i5 or something uh, like that. Uh, yes. Not in the data. Your your husband is very modern. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm very sorry. I twos is I have only I two. Um, I five is super super not in the data ancient DNA database, and that's the most comprehensive one we have. Give me a second. I'll look at. I just downloaded yesterday an even fresher version of this. Um, yeah, let me show you guys how we do science. Uh, it's already sorted here. I five. Cross your fingers. Ah, that's disappointing. <laughs> Try this one. Come on, I five. No, where's I five us from? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see here. Are you sure it's not the mitochondria? Sorry to ask. She, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. I was just trying to find one that was kind of different from. From all the rest, but if we can't find it, eventually we'll let's let's go with the assumption that I5 is mitochondria and okay. not Y. Okay. Uh Eastern European, Hungary, Sweden, and Germany. Uh we have uh, Viking, we have others. So we're looking at uh these these are the the the, the dates. Yeah. 
So yeah. these are this is as far as the data go from uh, 500 to 1100 uh, modern times. So this is the I5 in the ancient database. This is assuming you mean the mitochondrial haplogroup, not the Y. There is no Y I5. Okay. Okay, so that's where your husband goes. Um, you, you decide whether to break the news to him or not. Um, I don't know how <laughs> he feels about things, uh, but uh, that's as far as my responsibility goes. So the, I guess the, the, the in closing, um, Dr. Elhak, I think a lot of people, uh, especially in America, you know, there's this fast growing interest in DNA and a lot of uh, uh, quote unquote Afri African-Americans are you know looking at their heritage and and there's this conversation about you know are they Jews are they you know not or are they Israelites are they not and some believe that they are some believe that they're not so what would be I guess in closing would you would you say that I guess some of the E's because most of them come back are E ones uh, do you believe that or is, is it based on uh, whatever your understanding is of it of the subject uh, would you feel that some of them are a small percentage, a large percentage. What is your, your, your thoughts on that trace back to maybe the Levant first, and regions like that? First, be careful of what you read online. Uh, not everything is correct. Look for people who actively do science, not just talk about it. Uh, uh, an African uh, woman emailed me and referred me to this guy talking on Facebook. He had a quarter million people and he was selling this E1 group. And I said, of course, he has a quarter million group. If I would spend as much time to this, <laughs> I would also have millions. But but I can. I can barely maintain uh, my group on Facebook. Um, and um, yes, some of the E1s, something were in the Israeli cohorts. You need to understand we're looking at Canaanites. We're looking at the populations who don't care about color. Who don't, they, care, okay. they may care about gender. Right. Not so much about uh, colors. They were all minorities and, and they came from different places uh, looking for work, looking for a good place to herd their ships, forming communities um, and, and, and little by little moving on with time as they discovering agriculture, learning how to domesticate their animals and so forth. A lot of fascinating stories. I completely understand African American uh, fascination with the Israelites. I share it just as well. And um, yes, there is some basis to it, but do your own research. Don't go with people who tell you stories because at least this one person, I don't even remember his name, uh, did not know what he was talking about. Uh, the website that we just put uh, is the kind of science that you want to look for if you want to find, get credible answers, because again, there, there are people behind these data um, and stories, but, but first, firstly people, then the stories. Um, and I encourage you all to continue taking um, active interest in uh, in DNA and, and science. I, I think it's awesome. Uh, and I think it gives, does a lot of good to people. Um, yeah, if I were in Israel, I would invite you all to Israel. <laughs> but uh, I'm in Sweden. Just, you're all welcome to Sweden. Just not come in the winter when you get started for it. Well, well guys, we're going to let well, guys, we're gonna let Dr. Erhai go. He, he said it's, it's some basis to it. You know, it could be true, but hey, listen, don't put all your eggs in one basket and be driven by everybody. You know, just be honest. And Dr. people are asking for your Facebook group. Uh, they want to, I don't know if it's public or private or. Oh, it's it's all uh, public. Share it with you. Uh, so the most relevant group would be, would be uh, ancient Israelite DNA. Okay. Ancient Israelite DNA is the group on Facebook. Uh, exactly. You guys go over there and um, check out check out his page over there and, and, and subscribe to the page this over there. Don't forget, it will. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't forget also too. Don't forget to check out the DNA site. Go on the DNA site, uh, order kits. If you already have your kit already, go ahead and upload it um, um, to uh, to the site and uh, get information uh, from there as well. So Dr. Ilhike, thank you once again. And I really appreciate it. And um, I'll be definitely be in contact with any questions. I won't, I promise I won't, I won't annoy you or nag you or bog you down, but. Uh, I'm sorry it took so long. Uh, again, fine. there were objective reasons, but I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for your time and, and interest and for putting it all together. It was super helpful for the community and, and to get more, po more people on board. Uh, STEM subjects. I think you're doing a lot of good.
thank you thank you so much i'll email you the link to this live on youtube as well so if you decide you want to answer questions in the chat you can as well very good all right everybody thank you so much. give a shalom to uh dr l hike and uh dr hype thank you so much and have a great 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 thank wonderful you. rest of the year